Hello, beautiful friends. It's Erica here to do a video about the upcoming and impending full moon in Cancer happening at around 6 p.m. Eastern time on January 6, 2023. This is the first full moon of the year. It is called the Wolf Moon. And it was interesting because before I, I was sitting down to record a video and I wasn't sure if I was going to do a video for my other channel or this one. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to ask the cards which one I should do. And um, I pulled these cards and I thought it was really interesting in the way they came out. Because I was like, should I do a relationship reading over on my other channel or should I do a full moon reading? And um, out came the Four of Swords, the Sun, and the King of Pentacles. And very strongly was guiding me here to... Um, to do this reading. As you'll notice, there's a wolf here next to this King of Pentacles. So I kind of took that as a sign that this is the video that I should be doing. <laughs> but I really feel this is consistent with the energy I've been channeling for January, where there is just this almost like coming out of hibernation energy and into the sunshine, into the happiness, into joy, into optimism. And... Full moons, as you know, are all about releasing, and, and around the full moons, things get amplified. Obviously, this is a full moon in Cancer, which is um, a sign all about the emotions. Um, it's where we go, you know, can really go inward and reflect back on ourselves. Um, it's the need to kind of hibernate for a little while before we emerge out. I mean, if you think of what a crab does, right? Cancers in particular are known for those people who need to really withdraw for a period of time before they can come back out and be their sunny selves. So I, it's, I mean, I couldn't make this up if I tried, if I wanted to pull four cards from a deck to show the energy of this particular full moon. This is my guides being pretty cheeky with me as I was even, because I was drawn to doing this reading and then I was like, well, maybe I should do a relationship reading. You know, a lot of people are struggling right now. And, um, and then, and the, my guides are like, no, no, you should just kind of follow your guidance, Erica, when you first get it and don't second guess it. So <laughs> I'm going to put these back and, um, I'm going to start by taking a look at the themes. And in this reading, we're going to look at what's going to be amplified because we know full moon energy is about amplification. Everything's a little extra. So we're going to, I'm going to look at what's being amplified specifically to this full moon. And um, there will be an extended where I go a lot more in depth at looking at the before and after effects of this full moon. Um, if you are interested, the link is down below. And so I'm going to start by looking at some overall themes here that want to come through for this full moon in Cancer. And remember, guys, this full moon energy is good for about two weeks, especially. Um, before the next new moon. And so even if you're watching this after January 6th, just know these energies are still potent. So I'm gonna start off by pulling some themes for this full moon. And also um, do stay tuned guys. I actually, I haven't announced it here, but I just have opened up for the first time in a couple of years to my quantum healing sessions. I know many of you have been asking and waiting for me to do that. I've, I've just had a few. I announced it to my inner circle a, a couple weeks ago. Um, and those booked up right away. But I'm releasing them bit by bit a little bit because I feel really called to helping many of you get through this pretty challenging time. So if you're interested in checking that out, the link is down below as well to book a session. If they're not available, if they sell out by the time you want to do it, hang tight because I'm going to be releasing them in small batches. I don't want to release them and then be booked six months out and have you have to wait. So hang in there. And um, the sessions I've been doing, guys, I've only done four sessions so far. And holy crap. Um, you guys are next level. It's unbelievable to work with the souls that are being called to book one of these sessions with me. Life changing. It's where we look at the, um, really at the, um, at the, at the, whatever's happening energetically within you that is, is, is sort of preventing the further movement forward or, you know, living your best, best, um, life. 
So let's get a sense of the themes here for this upcoming full moon in Cancer. And you also want to look back at where your life was six months ago at the new moon in Cancer, FYI. But let's see what's coming through as a theme here. Okay, we're saying tread thoughtfully. Well, anytime emotions are amplified, right? Um, I feel like this is, uh, gosh, I'm being shown here that you, we've been all as a collective navigating through, in essence, a somewhat treacherous emotional time, almost like if you feel like if you just get knocked off a little bit that you could, you know, fall down into the abyss here. And so I feel like what's coming to an end here is this feeling like you're just trying to stay elevated, trying to stay stay, um, stay positive. If you've been in this energy of feeling like you have to sort of walk very carefully through your life, I feel like that's what's coming to an end, but we're going to get a lot more details here. Okay, so we're getting the all tied up and the victory card coming out together in the reverse. You know, it's almost like this full moon is a, a full moon where we are meant to be releasing the belief that there's only one path to our happiness. It's always interesting how the message evolves as the more cards come out. But many of you have almost been feeling like, I want to go to the promised land. I want to go somewhere. I want to achieve this. But there's only one thing that I, only one way that I can see to get there. But I feel like what the divine is doing right now is shaking everyone up to say, you know what? You're going to get where you want to go. It just might look different than you think it will or than you perceive it's going to look. And so rather than think there's just this one path to freedom, to happiness, to abundance, to love, this full moon is asking everybody to be open to any possibility. You know, a lot of people, this one narrow pathway, and you may have been very rigidly trying to stay on this, nor this pathway, like whether it's a career path, whether it's a relationship journey, you may have been feeling like, I've got to stay on this path because I've, I've committed to it. I've been on this, but I don't want to give up on this path. But what if there is some success right under your nose and this belief that you have to stay on this tiny path, this very specific path, is keeping you stuck? So ask yourself that question. Is there something you've been doing where you're just like, this is the only way. And maybe it's something that you've built that's very solid. You know, maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a relationship even where it's like, listen, you know, I've put a lot of energy into building this path really high up in the sky here. But um, the world is vast. What other um, theme is coming up for this wolf moon here? Interesting, we're getting the manatee. Accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. Exactly. Many people in the collective have been holding themselves stuck in situations where it's like they are just trying and efforting and expending a lot of energy into an area and wanting it to be different than it is. And it just isn't, you know, it's like you're not seeing that the victory isn't here and you've been staying stuck and the victory wreath is around you, but you're not seeing it. See how her eyes are closed. And I feel like this full moon is a moon that's going to make a lot of people realize where they have had success and love and abundance right around them but they've kept themselves from seeing it because they've been so laser focused on a narrow path. So I'm going to get a tarot deck here and add to this. So let's look at what's being amplified with this full moon energy. 
And in the extended, we're going to really kind of break these energies apart even more specifically and also give you a lot of guidance for how to navigate through this. So what um, is amplifying here in our thoughts? So we're getting the devil. God, wow. Guys, you can't, I mean, and the hermit. Look at this. All right, this is sort of that uh, that cross that that pivotal point where in our minds what's being amplified is we've got two nines here, guys. That is a card of solitude and independence. Where have I been keeping myself chained to something when I'd really rather be free of it? All tied up, and the devil, the chains of bondage are here. Where have you been either feeling like, you know, you're meant to be discovering something right now and you're meant to come out of this sense of what is it that I really want? Do I want to be controlled or do I want to be independent? On a global scale, this is a real big freaking full moon. This is a big deal full moon. It's got, I mean, we're talking about being enslaved versus being free. We're talking about being um, controlled versus being abundant. You know, um, some people may be breaking out of um, jobs, out of relationships, unhealthy patterns, unhealthy situations. This devil here is like, uh, 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 I don't want to let you go. And on our minds very strongly here is this like, no, I don't want to be tied up here. The devil, guys, remember, is an illusion. The illusion is that you are chained to something, but it's an illusion. These people have the ability to free themselves from this devil if they want to, but they're staying consciously stuck because they perceive that they are stuck in this situation. And this is this is where, again, remember I got that Four of Swords energy in the card at the beginning. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I just went to go pick up the three at the beginning and the hermit is right next to it. That's crazy town, right? You're meant to be discovering here that you're meant to be happy. You're meant to be successful and you're meant to live an abundant, free, happy life. And it's, it's like time to come out of hibernation and granted here in the, uh, in the Northern hemisphere, we did just have the winter solstice where it's the days are starting to get longer now. Interesting, the Empress ready to begin a new life. So what emotions are going to be amplified in the collective around this full moon? Three of Swords. The world, wow. Well, you know, clearly there could be some um, endings. Wow, another nine. Holy cow. You know, um, I just feel like this is a very strong, what could be amplified around this full moon is the sense of the completion of a journey. There may be heartbreak, there may be grief, there may be disappointment here, but then there's also hope. For many of you, you have already been processing and healing through disappointments of things that didn't go the way you wanted them to go. But you always have to remember that this, that the divine, um, every experience you go through is meant to strengthen you, to teach you, to help you discover more about yourself and your inner light and what you really desire in your life. But there is hope restored here. There's a feeling of hope. There's a feeling of happiness. And finally getting this, this, this release of any past sadness. I know with uh, many people, and especially in some of these sessions, it's like people are really, over the last couple of months, been really experiencing stuff that was maybe 20 years old, if you're old enough to have that apply, of course. But old wounds that you've healed through decades ago, and they've been, the final remnants of it have been resurfacing. And I do feel like that's been almost like the final shedding for many people of old, stuck, deep energy that has been needing to be released. So, you know, emotionally we may be feeling, yes, while there may be some disappointment, I'm done with that. I'm ready to live an enlightened, happy, hopeful life. I don't want to dwell in my past hurts. I don't want to dwell in past energy. I want to be hopeful about the future. 
I want to be successful. I want to be abundant. I mean, guys, we have three hermit cards here and the hermit showed up um, in the energies in the other deck as well. I'm going to move these over because I'm going to move these up. I cannot wait, guys. I've been in this temporary space. I'm supposed to only be here six to nine months max, and I've been here now almost a year and a half. It's really driving me crazy. <laughs> I'm ready to be free of living in a temporary situation. Um, but anyway, so don't be surprised if you feel a restoration of hope, of light, of excitement for the future. Yes, it may come with a twinge of disappointment, but I feel like that's really what's closing out. We do have the end of this journey here with the world. What, what um, instincts will be amplified? Sort of that primal instinct. And we're talking about the wolf moon here. Wow, six of, six of cups. The three of pentacles. And the page of swords. So I do feel like around this full moon, as we are releasing all of this old stuff that's meant to keep us from a sense of independence. And remember, even if you're in relationship or desiring a sacred partnership, it is vitally important for those of you who have done a lot of healing, who are on an ascension journey, that you maintain your independence even while in a couple. Many people lose themselves. They lose who they are. They feel like they're part of a unit. The healthiest of sacred unions are those who maintain their independence and their own integrity whilst together building something with a unified vision. And so the instinct here is to come together. The instinct is to reunite. The in instinct is to collaborate, cooperate. Um, I'm getting a feeling of a lot of people, maybe there's been a situation that you have held yourself back from and you've just been observing um, but this is almost like I'm, I'm feeling this energy of wanting to get into action, wanting to get a little bit more involved, maybe have some initial communication. An instinct here could be to reach out to somebody from soul family. This can be a card of reconciliation. Um, you know, this can be this energy of Wow, okay. I'm getting a really strong collective message right now. On a global scale. Instinctively, we may feel called to get into opening our hearts to other people. Maybe we've been holding back. Maybe we've not been speaking. Maybe we've just been in a wait and see mode here. Wanting to ignore the truth. Wanting not to see the truth. The instinct to look away from the truth. See how this page of swords has the sword of truth, but the, he's looking away from it. Pretending he's not seeing the truth, pretending he's um, not, he doesn't want to go there, right? The page of swords can be sometimes a painful truth that you may not want to see or even um, speak. But this is, this is really beautiful, guys. This is this, this is this message of, you know what? Enough turning away from truth. Let's work together. Let's find common ground. You know, let's see where we can make change. Let's see where we can open our hearts to our fellow humans, our fellow community members, our family, our friends, our loved ones. And I'm going to get a card on this page of swords in terms of the instinct to look away. Why is this page of swords here as one of the instincts amplified? Four of swords. Yeah. Where have you retreat, retreated from your truth? Or a truth or the truth? Where have you maybe been stuck in hibernation again? You've got the Four of Swords twice. We've got the Hermit twice in this reading. And very few tarot cards that were on the table. What? We've got 10 here plus 3, 13 tarot cards. And we've got two pairs coming back out. Four of Swords 
and the hermit. That's all about self-discovery. It's all about looking inward for your light. What is the truth, even if the outside looks different? What is it that feels right to you? And what is it that you want to heal? Some of you may feel a desire to heal a relationship, to, to, to mend a rift of some kind, and to come together. Why is the Six of Swords here? Sorry, Six of Cups, Queen of Swords. Well, more swords, right? I want to cut through the BS. I love you. I have feelings for you. I don't want any drama. Can we reconcile? Can we reunite? Can we decide to open our hearts to each other as opposed to stay in stony, cold mental energy, right? We're being pulled instinctively to open up our hearts. Like I said that at the very beginning of this reading. And obviously, cancer is an energy of emotions, of home, of family. So um, instinctively, because many of us have, if you have been on a journey of intense healing, this is a time where you might actually begin to act on that healing. You may begin to speak. You may begin to open up communication. Maybe things that you've learned from your healing. Things you've learned about yourself. Things you've learned about the world. Gosh, look at all these swords. Do you see what I mean? Where have you been afraid to open up your heart? Where have you been afraid to see the truth? See how this is blind? I always like, I always give the example with the two of swords. That can be the energy of the ostrich sticking your head in the sand and not wanting to see something. But once you see something, that's when you can collaborate and cooperate and make change in the physical world. This is a stubborn energy. This is a stubborn energy. This is um, a no drama, no BS energy. And I know many of you have been... Um, I've been having conversations with you, especially those of you in certain professions. I'll just leave it at that. They're having, um, you know, big wake up calls about your chosen calling and, and really what you are discovering. And, and, um, but this is once, once the truth is acknowledged, that's when solutions can be created, right? Whether this be in your relationships, whether this be in your job. Um, this is vitally, vitally important. So this is what's going to be amplified around this full moon. Accept the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. Sometimes it's about simply just not expending any more energy in areas where it's just not going to change or you're not going to change someone or something. Um, and preserve that energy for yourself. You know, stop giving your energy out to where it's not making a difference. Channel that energy to something that is going to make a difference, that is being um, shown to you by the divine. So my beautiful friends, I hope that this was helpful. Um, if you're interested in a healing session, the information is down below. The extended reading is down below. In that extended reading, I'll be going into a lot more into the effect of this particular full moon on the collective. So I look forward to seeing some of you there. Until next time, bye.